Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations, my friends. I'm so glad that you're here listening in for some inspiring conversation with a good friend. I'm Linda Joy, Mindset Elevation Coach, publisher of the beloved Aspire Magazine. And you know I'm passionate about bringing you conversations that kind of empower, inspire, and support you in living your best life in every area of your life, health, relationships, happiness. I know what it's like to struggle through life. And that's why I started the show eight years ago. We don't have to struggle. We just have to open our hands to receive, open our arms to receive all the support that's always around us. And today I am excited to have a dear friend with me, Mary Beth Gadevich, who is you're going to be in for an amazing conversation because we're going to be talking about reclaiming your health by honoring the house your soul resides in. And when I first read that, um, Mary Beth's notes, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a conversation for my soul. And so we're going to, Mary Beth is known for blending, and you're going to see this perfect blend in action for blending science and intuition. She's a functional nutritionist and board certified holistic nutrition and healthy gut specialist, supporting women to get to the root of their health issues, their gut. Believe it or not, it all starts in the gut, my friends. She is committed to supporting women to enhance their body, mind, and spirit connection, soothe their gut, and reclaim their optimal health through intuitive guidance, bio-individual nutrition, and lifestyle plans, as well as chakra work, energy clearing, and meditation. She often works with women with autoimmune disease, digestive issues, chronic fatigue, and food sensitivities. And I don't know if that's not you and you don't fall in that category, I will guarantee you, you have a friend or relative that does, because I know I do. She's the founder of Bella Nutrition Services and is also a certified nutrition therapy practitioner, master nutrition therapist, functional nutrition lifestyle practitioner, and certified gluten practitioner. So, girl, we're going to be doing some talking today. Welcome, Mary Beth. Hello, Linda. Thank you so much for having me. It's so good to be here. Well, you know, you know, I love the work you're doing in the world because so many midlife women, you know, that's you and myself, are struggling with hormone imbalances, sleep issues. In fact, we were just discussing, I got up at 150 last night, um, and food sensitivities, right? And I love this topic today because you believe that when we honor the house that our soul resides in which is our body as we know we can bring ourselves back in alignment and reclaim the energy we need to function optimally so let's talk about your journey because i always i always believe in almost every episode that i talk to a woman and go how did your journey end you where you are today doing the work and it's always usually from their own personal experiences. So what led you into functional medicine? In Great nutrition? question. Um, I, it, it's thinking back, it started in my childhood. I would get these strange fevers and my mom would have to bring them down. They were like 106, 107. And I remember a key turning point was in my late twenties when I started passing kidney stone after kidney stone, after kidney stone, I finally uh, caught one of them. And I went to the doctor and he looked at it, studied it and said, hey, it's created by protein and, and sodium. And I said, okay. And his first response was like, well, let's just put you on a pill for it. It'll reduce it. And this was before I was in functional holistic nutrition. And I thought to myself, I'm like, there's gotta be another way. I'm really young. 
And so I did some research on the medicine and, and some of the side effects. I'm very, I, that's the other thing. I'm very highly sensitive to a lot of things. And uh, if there was ever a pharmaceutical when I was a child, I would get the side effects. So I looked into it and I went back to him and I said, I'm a little concerned about the side effects. Is there another option? And he goes, well, we can try having you meet with my nutritionist, but it never works. And I said, well, let me try that. And I met with her and I followed clearly what she taught me. And I went back and got retested and my numbers were at a quarter of what they were. And he was blown away. So that started my journey of curiosity into the, I've, I've always want, I've always been fascinated by the human body and how it works, but I started the journey with how do we bring our body into balance? And I had a couple of other health issues crop up, Epstein-Barr, adrenal fatigue, lupus, but I never looked at those moments of when I got those diagnoses as why me, more like, ooh, another opportunity to learn deeper. And because I started to realize I, I went back to school to study nutrition, but then I realized it was more than nutrition that there is a definite spiritual piece to our health and well-being. So I started on the journey of studying under some great, highly intuitive spiritual teachers to understand deeper that connection of our body and our mind and our spirit and how it's all working together. And that by the time it settles into the body, that's the last place. That means that you've been ignoring the spiritual signals. You've been ignoring the mind, which is also emotional. And now it's in your body and it's like, hello, why aren't you listening? So I started using that approach with myself and that's how I continually self-heal. I have put my lupus in remission. I've put my Epstein-Barr in remission. I healed my adrenals and as you know, with our bodies, I'm a very type A, high stress. So I tend to put myself in the hole at times, but I always go back to what's under that for me. Where do I need to start really doing the healing work? And I love that you tie in um, the body and mind, right? Because mm -hmm. you know, from our personal conversations that I had to find out the hard way, right? And I think so many women do. And it's something you said a moment ago is, we're always getting the signs, right? And mm -hmm. before it shows up in our body, it's just we're programmed not to listen. We're programmed to push, 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 ignore. And I think that's cultural programming for one, but especially, don't you notice it in women? Hands down. Um, we are very multitasking beings, human beings. We are the CEO of the houses. We are wanting to get out and serve in whatever your career calling is. We are asked to be the rock for our families, for um, friends. It's very much an interesting dynamic as a woman, and we are so driven by our emotions. Um, and when we don't acknowledge that part of us and, and love and accept that part of us, we can go into a guilt with what, you know, why am I continually being this way? Why am I continually getting sick instead of stepping back for a moment and honoring the beauty of being a woman and the gifts that we do bring forth? I mean, the emotional piece is a gift. The fact that we can feel is huge because there's a lot of, you know, you'll, you know, there's people that are so driven but we have the gift of the emotion and to see the gifts within one another. And, and when we can honor that and when we can honor ourselves in taking care of us, it allows us then to be there for others with the amazing dynamics of being a woman in the way that we can assist and serve and love. Mm, beautifully said. And, and one of the things I'm 62 and I've noticed on my journey, and I know from my conversations that you see this in yourself and other clients is I would, I push, push, push for many years that I would wait and go, oh yeah, I'll go to the gym or I'll make lunch or dinner. 
when I have a moment, like I was the end of my to-do list. And some days it, I wasn't even in my own schedule. <laughs> like there was no Linda time. I would just w work till I passed out at night. And I think that was turned into such a crisis in the world, but especially in midlife women that I think where a lot of us are waking up going, what the heck am I doing? I abandoned my body. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you said something interesting. Cooking was the last thing on your list, cooking a nourishing meal. Yeah, and I still struggle with that sometimes. Exactly. But it's, it's a simple act of love. It's a simple act of nourishing your body. And when you cook for with from this place of love and you can take that time, even in a busy life, it's so nourishing on every level. And well, it can be as simple it, as that. I know you believe this too, because of um, Mary Beth writes for Aspire Magazine. She's been in my summit. She's um, just has so much a wealth of information. Um, for me, it was the, you talk about the energy and food, right? So mm -hmm. you talk about putting love as we're making a meal instead of going, ah, Jesus, I got to throw something together, right? And you know me as a woman, it's like, I'm all about energy, but I still struggle when it comes to food. It's like, it's a task. Mm -hmm. Like Dana goes, babe, sometimes you, I think you eat just to fill a hole where he enjoys every bite. He loves his rich, his mealtime ritual right to yes. me because of my relationship with food in my younger years i'm still i'm still healing that i'll have great weeks sometimes great months and then i'll fall back but what you just shared about making the food with love and looking at the food as a gift to your body not a task to be done mm -hmm. exactly i think so much we get caught up in our to-dos as women and some of us love to cook and some of us don't. That's okay. Um, I started shifting my perspective on it as a more of a moving meditation. So as I prepare a meal and I put it together and it doesn't have to be a challenging meal, it can be an under 30 minute meal, very simple, but it's just comes from a place of my heart and that then with my family, I'm able to share this meal and have that time. I think so much we do look at it as everything as a task because that's how we're wired. But what if we were to shift that one thing where preparing a meal for ourselves, even if it's lunch, even if it's breakfast, that it is a gift to you instead mm -hmm. of a task to do. That is powerful. I love that. Mary Beth, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, I want to continue this conversation about energy and food because it really resonates with me. We'll be back in a moment, my friends. I invite you to visit Mary Beth at bellanutritionservices.com. All the info is also in the show notes. We'll be back in a moment, my friends. Within you is the ability to consciously choose your thoughts and decisions. Making conscious choice transforms everything from your day-to-day -day experiences to the direction your life takes and the achievement of your dream life. Conscious Choices coach Mary McGuirk empowers and teaches her clients how to make conscious choices to align their thoughts, beliefs, and actions with the dreams and vision they hold for their life. As a Master Law of Attraction coach and Desire Factor coach, Mary's unique methodology empowering the use of storytelling and her supportive non-judgmental coaching style supports clients to understand where their predominant vibration is and how they can consciously choose moment by moment to create the outcomes they desire. Just beyond your everyday experiences, your heartfelt desires are calling you to life. Learn more at lifejustbeyond.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy. With me today is Mary Beth Gadevich. She is, um, gosh, she is certified as so many certifications because this is her passion, what we're talking about today. She's a functional nutritionist, board certified holistic nutrition and healthy gut specialist. And as you can tell um, throughout this episode, you are really passionate. Like this is coming. This is your soul work. 
And what I love too about um, your work, and we're going to be talking more about energy, is as an intuitive, you blend both. You blend the science and the intuition. And that's why we're going to be talking about energy because some people might not even think about what energy are they putting into their meals? What energy are they putting into their foods? So what I, what, how did you find that that was so important? I started, uh, when I was in nutrition school, we studied um, uh, this book about water. And um, yeah, oh, I cannot remember his name, but he- Yamoto? Yes, Yamoto. Yes. So he showed this demonstration of this, these two glasses of water. And in the one, he sent it love and gave it so much care and, and from his heart, from his soul. And then he took this other glass of water and he said all of these negative words, which words have power, even what we tell ourselves, words have power. He then studied each of the water crystals under a microscope and he found the ones with love were just in these beautiful shapes, just gorgeous. And the ones where he spoke the negative, hateful words were so shriveled and so, it, it's so it just not full of life. And that to me was a huge wake up call with, wow, you know, we're made of water, right? So yeah. you think about the food we put in, do we give it love? Do we acknowledge it before we put it in the body? And number two, we're made of water. What are we also telling ourselves? So we, let's talk about mind and emotion, right? What do, what's our, what's our self-talk with that? So I started to realize, okay, let's start with the food. Let's start with what we're nourishing our body with. Then let's work with what we're telling ourselves. And I have found it, it's it's been amazing, this journey with it, because when I cook with love and I either go to a party or I serve a meal for my family, my daughter will say, oh my gosh, mom, this tastes so good. And normally I don't like steak, but oh. This meal is so good. She goes, you cooked it with love, didn't you? And I said, <laughs> yep. And I do that with everything I prepare now because I sit with it for a moment and just, I surround that bowl or that plate and just send it love. And, and it just is amazing how it makes you feel inside your body, how it nourishes it. So yeah, I, I, that's where I figured out there was a connection with how we acknowledge what we're, and you can do it with your glass of water every day. Just surround your cup of water and give it some love because it'll love you back. And mm. that's, that's where I saw that connection. And I love that. And I remember when that book came out. So let's circle back to what we were talking about in the first segment about we have a tendency, especially as women, to ignore the signals you know, that things are starting to get off kilter with our body. So what are some of those signals that we, we may be getting? Great question. Um, everybody's bio-individual, but I'm going to give you some high-level signals that I've seen in practice and within myself. Um, you might be getting some digestive issues. So you might get some gas and bloating that you're ignoring after a meal. You may be noticing you're having some headaches. You may be noticing that you have are having panic attacks. You feel this anxiety in you and you're ignoring it. You're tamping it down. Oh, it's just stress. It's just this. Um, joint pain can be another indication. Um, breast pain in women. I've seen a lot of that uh, as a pre-signal to other things down the road. Uh, dry eyes. It can be a cough that's been persistent for a while. It can also be where you feel disconnected to your source, God, divine, whatever it is. And you just feel like you're in this isolated place in your world and you're ignoring that signal. Um, it can be where things continually go wrong in your life and you're despondent, you're unmotivated, you're sad. Those are all signals to stop and take a look at what's going on. Where is this leading to? Um, I always tell my clients, it's multifactorial. It's not just one thing. Uh, it's not just having gas and we're gonna give you a digestive enzyme and you're gonna be well again. 
it is so layered and so nuanced and each woman is so individual i could have two two clients sitting in front of me two female clients same diagnosis same symptoms but i will be treating each of them differently and that's where i realize that you have to start early listening to those signals and when you're feeling it in the body stop this is not just something to brush off which we as women want to do right oh it's no big deal it's fine it's just i had lots of stress so that's why that meal isn't sitting with me well with me mm, you need to kind of stop and really listen to that and i'm not talking to be over analytical but acknowledge it and then just start to notice other patterns in your life where maybe I'm leading myself down a path that I don't want to be on. And mm. you can shift it. So it's like having a conversation and be open to listening instead of just shutting down. Correct. And we tend to sweep it aside as women because yeah. we feel we have to be all to everybody. Yeah, we put ourselves last. But what I've learned, and I know you teach, is we can't be there for anyone if we can't be there for ourselves. Correct. Yeah, I, I'm, I wish I had learned that a lot earlier in my life instead of in my 50s and 60s. Um, so that's why this conversation with our women listeners is so important. So one of the other things is you talk about eating foods that match your frequency. Yes. So talk about that. I know um, foods have their own frequency, but how do we know how to match it? Correct. That's a great question. So I'm going to go back to the basics, which let, let's just talk. You want to eat organic. You want to eat grass-fed finished. You want to eat poultry raised. You, so we want to go back to as clean as you can with the food. But your food frequency is so individual. So for example, you hear in the general consensus public, oh, salads are so healthy for you. You should have a salad. You should get you all your greens in it, get your veggies in. But let's say you don't vibe with the romaine lettuce, that for whatever reason, raw lettuce doesn't sit well in your body and it actually creates pain or discomfort. Then for you, that particular food is not in your vibrational level at this time. Now, does it mean that we can't make some corrections and you can get it back in? absolutely possible. But that is a food that you're reacting to and your body will tell you right away, okay, this food isn't vibing with me. And when you eat foods that are in frequency with you, you will feel more energized after the meal. You will have no digestive symptoms that are negative. You will feel nourished. Your brain will be turned on you will feel in complete alignment. And it's really this process of figuring out the foods that make me feel good and the foods that kind of make me feel down. And it can be a mood shift too. It, not just a physical feeling. It can be like, oh, I ate that meal and I'm really tired. Or I ate that meal and I just, I'm kind of just kind of in a funk right now. I need to, what, what's going on with me? But when you eat the foods that that you vibrate with, that just elevate you, you're you're on your A game. You're on your A game. And I and, think all of us can can think of times where we were out to eat and maybe we ate something and we we can recognize exactly what you're saying. Cause I bet all of us right now are thinking, oh yeah, when I eat this, this is how I feel. I know I have those foods. So I love that because what's it isn't across the board. Okay, have a salad and salmon because someone else may not, their body systems may not tolerate that because that's not their frequency. Correct. Their body does not. And you, it can be as simple as raw versus cooked. It could be like you eat a raw tomato and you're great, but then you have a, so a homemade sauce and you're in complete agony. You don't feel good afterwards. So your body, your frequency, your body prefers that raw food version of that tomato. And I really firmly believe, and I have seen the patterning with my clients that it's a frequency. It's yes, there is the science piece of it. It's physical. We need to heal the gut. We need to work on pieces, but there are some foods where 
they don't vibe the rest of their life, that it may be something that needs to come out for the rest of their life because for whatever reason, it's not, it's not within their individual frequency. And I firmly believe this because we are so trained in society where you must be vegetarian to be more spiritual. You must eat more meat because it's better for your body. Guess what? All that needs to be thrown out the window. Nutrition is so much more and the frequency of food is so bio-individual to a person that you need to go on your own journey to figure out what that is for you. And it all starts by paying attention, right? Paying attention to how we feel after after every meal or after a certain food. And I think right there is key, paying attention. And it's really easy to do. You just get a journal. Just get a journal, piece of paper. And write down what you eat. You don't have to put the amounts. Just write down what you eat. And then write down after that meal, how do you feel? And then you're going to start to see patterns. You do that for like seven to 10 days, you're going to start to see patterns. Like, oh, I'm not doing really well with raw food, but I'm doing really well with cooked food. Or, wow, in the nightshade family, I can't do eggplant or peppers, but oh my gosh, I can do potatoes, no problem. They make me feel really good. And when you start feeding your body those foods that that match your frequency, that really nourish you, um, you're filling your gas tank. You're filling your gas tank with good fuel that will love, help you. I love that idea of writing it down too. Um, we're going to take another break, Mary Beth. When we come back, let's talk a little more about um, energy in that food and drink because you believe we all have that capability to send it. And we'll be right back, my friends, with Mary Beth Kadevich of Bella Nutrition Services.com. We'll be back in a moment. Your worth is not determined by the number on the scale. You are enough right now, exactly as you are. If you're like many midlife women, you've thought, if I could just reach my ideal weight, I'd be so much happier. What we're really craving is our own love and acceptance, and Sarah Haas is that guide for your journey. Sarah is a women's weight release expert and body love coach, and walks alongside midlife women ready to say yes to self-care, self-compassion, and body love so they can become the healthy, vibrant, and unapologetically confident women they're here to be. Her holistic approach integrates nutrition, body movement, and self-care to nurture body, mind, and spirit. Visit sarahaaswellness.com for supportive resources, programs, and more for midlife women ready to reclaim their health. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. We are talking about, I would call it intuitive eating. Um, I love this conversation. It's about honoring the house that your soul resides in. And Mary Beth, right before the break, we were talking about um, energy and frequency. And I love that strategy you gave is, you know what? Just keep a light food journal. And to get an idea of how your body's reacting, because for me, for many years, it just was. I would eat. I wasn't paying attention to discomfort or certain foods will make me feel like I hadn't slept in three days. Now I'm more conscious, but I still sometimes go for those foods. So do we all have the capability to send energy into our food and drink? You shared a little bit, like you shared that when you have the plate in front of you, you're just um, sending love to it. For me, in that moment, as you were describing it, it was like gratitude, right? Thank mm -hmm. you. It's food I'm going to give my body. Exactly. Uh, so it's, it's, we could even teach children this. Mm -hmm. Hands down. Imagine, imagine teaching children this at a young age and what they're setting themselves up for lifelong. Yeah, they're setting because, themselves up for nourishing their bodies at a young age. Yeah. Instead of that's good for you. You can't have, you can have more of that, but that's bad for you. They, that good and bad that I think all of us grew up with. Correct. I know I did. Um, that creates this pattern. So even as an adult, you're like, oh, I really shouldn't have this. Who said? Who's the one that made that rule, right? But we just grew up hearing it. Correct. I, 
you know, just speak for myself. I don't know if that's everyone's experience, but then it becomes almost like a little mantra in the mind, right? Certain food category categories you shouldn't have too much of. Mm -hmm. Correct. And go ahead. ahead. I was going to ask you, right, when you said earlier that you could have a couple different women sitting in front of you and they come in and it would be a different protocol. So I wanted to talk about that because um, with functional nutrition, you're treating, you're listening to their symptoms, but you're looking at a big picture. That's why you call it bio individual, right? Because it isn't like, Oh, she has this. Let's do just give her this. So talk about what is bio individual? Yes, absolutely. Great question. I think we're getting caught up. Functional nutrition is the word functional is being thrown around a lot, but this is the tenants I live by. So to me, being a functional nutrition is a, a therapeutic partnership. So we're having an open communication. We're really talking about what's really going on and, and getting under those pieces. And we communicate with each other. Cause I always assess, recommend and track, right? We also, I also look for the root causes, the why not what or diagnosis. So why are you coming to me today? And you're sitting with symptoms what is under the roots? And then, and, you know, we always have like the, the, the three main roots and are inflammation, digestion, and genes. And there's many branches and many branches are those symptoms, but I want to work with why are we sitting in this space? And I use a systems based approach, which means it's not, I'm not throwing protocols at you. What we're doing is I'm doing a targeted diet, lifestyle, spiritual modifications to shift you. And I also support and educate. So it's not about a protocol or a diet or a regimen like, okay, you should be getting eight to nine hours of sleep a night. Maybe your ideal is not eight to nine hours of sleep. We play detective together. And then I teach you how to be your own detective. And so you walk away with a toolkit and it's your individual toolkit. And does that mean that we're not going to continue to change and evolve and maybe things that were working stop working? Absolutely. That happens. We are changing and evolving as human beings every decade, right? Every day, every minute, right? Energy is constantly shifting, but that's the difference. I don't sit there and put you into a protocol or put you into a box based on you know, a woman of a certain age that weighs a certain way that has this particular disease and with these symptoms. Nope. It's so much more and it goes so deep. But I love that because um, we, I, the word you use that really stood out to me is root, right? Because yeah. everything started there and now it's blooming into your body, you know, what as illness, disease, a symptom. So it's like not just trimming the top buds that are showing, it's going down. And that's the visual I saw. Exactly. And we always think that nutrition is food. Well, what if I were to tell you nutrition is about growth, metabolism, repair? Where is the trigger a challenge? Where do we need to build resi- resilience together in you? It's so dynamic and it's everything so multifactorial. It's not just one thing. And that's, that I think is, you know, is missing. And I think people's relationships with their bodies, women's relationships mm-hmm. with their bodies. I mean, we, I, every, every woman I know in my life, you have a conversation, it, you know where it goes, right? It yes. either goes to food, weight, not feeling well. Yeah. But, but then they're like, okay, I'll just exercise more and I'm going to restrict on this. And I, I, I can say I've done all that too. It doesn't work and it makes you feel less than what you just described to me makes me feel like, um, and you used, I think you used this word partnership, correct? You know, um, it's a partnership. And I think too, it's almost like you're, it's not almost, you are kind of reintroducing a woman to her body because she's become so disconnected from it. And everyone's disconnection 
may look different, right? Correct. But I think that's a big part. Is that who you notice comes to you the most as midlife woman? Yes, I do see a lot of midlife women. I see women that are in the peri menopause to postmenopause phase of change. And our bodies as women go through a lot of change. And when we can honor that journey and love our body as it goes through this evolving, I find that when you come out the other side, it's our time to embrace our wisdom. Yeah, I know it has been for me and I'm 62. It has definitely been for me. Mm -hmm. And it's okay that the body changes. I think we have such a societal push to look perfect, to look young, but I have found in my life, and even as a small child, I was always enamored of the women that stood in their own power and strength of who they were and owned it. And they aged so gracefully because they weren't fighting with themselves and their weight and what they were doing to their body. They embraced this change and they were glowing from within. I mean, how would that feel? Mm. I, can, I You just brought up a memory. I can remember being in Plymouth, Mass. It was a day with family, maybe 25 years ago. And, you know, I was in a, a little tourist shop. I live not far from Plymouth. And I had a spinning rack of postcards. Um, and not like um, tourist postcards, but like quotes. And it was like it was meant for me. It's, and it was anonymous. There was nobody um, attributed to the quote. And it said, if you don't take care of your body, where will your soul live? Yes. Now, I've heard different versions of that, but never with the word soul in it. And it was purple and it's, you know, the size of a postcard and something in. And I was on a spiritual path at that time. I had just probably maybe three years in and like it took my breath away. I'm like, oh, because here I am, like developing my connection to my soul, spirit, intuition. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. For some reason. Now, here's, here's the flip side. For some reason, the fact of just taking care of my body wasn't enough, right? Yes. But it, that statement put it in perspective in a spiritual way. And, you know, I'm pretty open with my listeners. And you have a friend, so you know, mm -hmm. that I've struggled um, with the food issue since I was anorexic in my teens and 20s. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw that, I remember going, my soul, oh, my God, we Where's it, where's it going to go? I remember that. And do you know that must that stayed on my refrigerator for multiple moves in my 20s and 30s? I don't know what happened to it, but someone just, uh, I just saw a sign at my gym. I just started back at my gym and they have a little wooden one and it doesn't say soul. It says, if you don't take care of your body, where will you live? And I took a picture of it going, okay, Lynn, third day back in the gym and they put that out. There's a message there for you. Yes. Uh, so... Uh, it's that it's that blend of everything you teach. It has to be body, mind, spirit. We can't we can't treat one without having a conversation with the other. Correct. And I think we forget, like when I realized that our body houses our soul. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we need to love it. It needs love. Yeah. It's going to carry us through our lifetime. So love it treat it well, take care of it, like your garden, like your house. That's, that's so beautiful because some of us will spend all kinds of time um, weeding that guided plant and getting it ready for the season and same with the house, but we don't do it for ourselves and I've been guilty of it. We're going to take our next break. We come back, I want to dive even deeper because one of the things I think I want to cover is the conversation women have with themselves. I personally believe our bodies are always listening and that negative self-talk and that negative judgment against bo certain body parts plays a big role. Um, and I, I feel like I've healed the inner talk about my body over the last decade, but it breaks my heart. I'm seeing it in younger and younger kids. So in our last segment, let's dive in, Mary Beth. And we'll be back in a moment, my friends. I'm with Mary Beth Gadevich. You can learn more at bellanutritionservices.com. Check out the show notes for all of her information. We'll be right back. Are you ready to create and live the divinely guided life intended for you? 
A life not bound by your past or tied to a specific future. A life beyond your fears and what ifs that is filled with limitless possibilities. Experiencing an empowered life of fulfillment, joy and connection is possible when you embrace a spiritual solutions-centered lifestyle. Through her transformational teachings and programs, Lisa Hermata, empowered life view guide, life transformation mentor, and founder of Love is the Seed, empowers women to break the barriers holding them back from living their sacred truth so they can find greater connection with their inner wisdom and their divine source to co-create a life that brings peace, joy, and self-acceptance. Visit loveistheseed.com for positive guidance and valuable resources to support you in embracing an empowered life view. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. So in this last um, segment, about 10 minutes, Mary Beth, I wanted to touch base on that because I hear my girlfriends, like we look at a woman and we go, oh, she's beautiful. And I'm not talking just beautiful in the physical. I'm talking about the energy, all of it. And then you have a conversation with that woman and she's degrading herself or her body parts or something. I'm like, oh my God, this is becoming an epidemic. And now you, you witness it in 10, 12, 13 year old girls. Yeah. Um, Self talk, to, it plays a powerful part in our health too, doesn't it? It totally does. And I think for the young women in this world, I urge mothers to set the example for them. Um, that's the best way you can teach them. So it starts with you as a parent loving your body and, and speaking highly of it and having a good conversation with it and having that conversation with your daughters. Like this, your body is beautiful and your body is amazing. And what you tell it and how you speak to it, it listens. And that's what a lot of women don't think about is your body is listening. And when you keep telling it, it's not beautiful, it's fat, it's whatever. Those cells are listening to that and will be like, oh, okay, is that how I'm supposed to be? Okay, I'll do that for you. Whereas what if you were to sit there and go, oh, I love you, I love my face, I love my stomach and my thighs and thank you for this beautiful body I have. And what if you were to tell your body that every day? Those cells are gonna be like, okay, I'm listening. Let's do this. And I, I I just remember that it goes back to setting the example as a mother, as a grandmother of, because that's where I got it from. I watched my grandmother tell me, moisturize, 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 tell your body you love it. And my aunt did the same thing for me when I was very young. And one of it happened when I was eight years old. And the second my aunt told me at 15, which is at very vulnerable age where you just are so awkward. And I mm -hmm. remember her saying, love yourself. You're beautiful. No, but you have to know you're beautiful. And that has to come from within you. That's so true too. And I can remember you know, even like you said, that teenage years, of course, we all go through that. But, mm -hmm. you know, usually, hopefully, it's just a stage as a teen goes through. But a lot of times the story continues, right? And they bring it into adulthood. But even um, as you know, I had surgery a couple of years ago, and the, the doctors were amazed at my healing process. And I beat a lot of odds. But one of the funny stories was, I had a large surgery wound. And he goes, I can't believe how much is this healing? And he goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, do you really want to know? He goes, yeah. I go, I talk to it every day. Look at you, baby. You're getting better and better every day. Like I looked at it as a goddess wound. Exactly. And Mary Beth, I swear to this day, I never, ever from the moment I gained consciousness, never looked and said, oh my God, I can never wear a bikini again. It didn't cross my mind. I was like, thank you for saving my life. Yeah. Right. But through the, the healing of the wound, I did. I talked to it. I go, look at you, baby. You are healing so fast. And I believed exactly what you said. Our cells are healing. I mean, our cells are listening. 
And the flip side is that when that happened and I caught myself in the lodge mirror in the bathroom saying that, um, I looked in the mirror and I said, girl, you've come a long way because in the, my younger years, I would have judged it. Yeah. And that's why I wanted you here on the show today to have this conversation, you know, about honoring um, our bodies, honoring our souls, our spirits, every aspect of us instead of judging it. And so for every woman listening, every time you start to judge that body pad or, or judge food is good or bad, think of everything Mary Beth's been sharing with you today. Everything is energy. Mm -hmm. It is. We are all made of energy. Everything in this planet is energy. And our human bodies and science is proving that. We are energetic beings. So like energy attracts like energy. Always think about that. Always and, think about it. And when we, we have symptoms too, because I used to go, oh my God, you know, when I, in my 20s, oh my God, what's that? Mm -hmm. And then I'd focus on it. So what would happen? The darn symptom would get worse. Correct. But then as I learned, because as you, like you, I'm very intuitive. I'm like, wait a minute. Why am I going to focus on a story I don't want? Why don't I try to listen? And... And I shifted how I manage symptoms, messages from my body. And I'm sure that's something you must notice with your clients as they work with you. They're like, I've never had this conversation with my body before. Correct. And when I was going through my kidney disease, I stopped and one of, I, I, have, I have the power, I believe in that we all have the power to self-heal. And I started talking to my kidneys every day. Like, what do you need? What do you need? What do you, what am I not seeing? How can I best help you? And they'll yeah. talk back if you listen. That's the amazing thing. Yeah, because it could come in all of a sudden you ask the question and a day later it could be like a supplement drops in your mind or a, a food or you need more Correct. of this. Like that is what happens, right? Yeah, and it's not just, you know, it's not going to be a little voice that's going to talk to you necessarily. It's how you receive messages. So yeah. it could be something you're listening to on the TV. It could be you pick up a book and you're reading a paragraph and it has the answer in it. Or it could be a girlfriend that's talking to you and she says something in the conversation that's totally random that she wouldn't talk about, but it's the message you need to hear that your yeah. body needs. And that's what we need to start being in recognition of and being in our bodies to see those signs and to listen. And I think that's one of the most important gifts as women that we can give ourselves is start. And if you feel that you haven't had a relationship with your body and listen, it's unfolding still for me too. So be gentle with yourself, but give yourself that gift, you know, and yeah. tap into Mary Beth's wisdom. You can find her at Bella Nutrition Services. Um, she has episodes on my YouTube channel. She writes for Aspire Magazine. Um, and she's always putting out content um, through her email newsletter. So um, please visit her at bellanutritionservices.com. And when you get there, you're going to know that you'll have access to a powerful free gift. Mary Beth, if you want to tell them about that as we come to a close. Yes, it's a five-piece uh, body, mind, spirit alignment. So you're going to get uh, four meditations, really powerful, really powerful, um, that kind of gets you into your body and listening and releasing what is no longer serving you. And then there's also an affirmation poster. And I'm a huge fan of affirmations. Again, we're talking to our body, we're talking to our mind and our spirit, and our cells are listening. So I recommend doing an affirmation each day. And I have to tell you, the affirmations poster is stunning, ladies, and the meditations are powerful. And the poster, I love, I'm a visual person, and um, Mary Beth's poster i mean this is printable material this is it's stunning you want to print it out it's not something you just go oh thanks for the download no it's wait till you see it it's stunning and it's a beautiful because for those who process visually like me i love having my affirmations in front of me even if you're not consciously looking at it they're in your energy field and that's what this whole conversation has been about right yes. is you know nurturing the energy you want to call into your life and into your body so again, that's bellanutritionservices.com. And Mary Beth, do you have um, a closing piece of wisdom more than you shared already? We have about a minute left. Yes, I would just like to say 
start with each meal sitting in gratitude, whether it's prayer or just thankful for the food you have, but sit with your meal, love, give it love and gratitude and enjoy and savor that first bite as it nourishes your body. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I feel like we could have gone for three hours, my friend. Yes, me too, Linda. I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. Um, I think it's, listeners. it's such an important message. So thank you. Thank you. Until next time, my friends, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.